Let's review what we have covered in Entity Relationship Diagramming Database Design so far. In order to do this, what I'll do is to take an actual problem that I had provided as part of your practice uh, problem set and we'll go through the Entity Relationship Diagram for that problem step by step. We'll develop the diagram incrementally and for each requirement I'll first show you what is involved in just meeting that particular requirement and then also show you the complete entity relationship diagram as it develops. Okay. Now studying this carefully should really help you in understanding and solidifying the concepts as well as to help you immensely as you approach the project. Uh, you will recall that the course has a course project and uh, this will help you immensely as you work towards your course project. Now of course if you have any questions uh, you should definitely post whatever questions you have on Slack uh, but be very specific as you post questions. Don't just say I don't understand this, I don't understand that. Well think about what your understanding actually is and why you see that there is a difference between what I have shown and what you might have thought. Okay, that will help me to give you a constructive answer. It will also help others to learn from your question. Okay, so I'm taking the first problem and taking a look at it step by step. The first sentence of the problem description says, CharlesRiver.com CRC has many employees. For each employee, CRC stores an ID, first name and last name. Okay, so it's pretty clear that in this case, uh, employee is an entity type. And I've called that employee entity type as V underscore M. That's because we are going to eventually, you know, when you do the project, you're going to eventually transfer all the tables into Apex. And unfortunately, Apex allows only one database, a single database. Okay, that is, you've got Apex, which has got a database system. Typically, a database system will allow you to store multiple separate databases within it, inside it and each database will have a bunch of tables. With Apex, all we are doing is getting one single database and therefore you cannot create multiple tables which have the same name. Okay, so just to avoid all the hassles that come about if there is any name duplication, I just thought it would be a good idea to prefix whatever entity type names we create with something unique. Okay, so that there is no problem with the names, uh, the existing name, with the name, new name that we are creating clashing with an existing name. That's why I've just shown this and uh, mainly this is intended to uh, to be a practice that you would follow in your project. Okay, and I also kept the entity type name short. Okay, now again this is not a requirement but having a long entity type name uh, causes certain other hassles which we'll probably see and I'll talk about it when we come to that. Okay, so it says for each employee, uh, CRC stores an ID, first name and last name and therefore I have created those as our attributes. Okay, now it doesn't tell us anything about which attributes are required attributes and which attributes are optional. So I'm simply assuming that both of the non-key attributes are actually required attributes. Okay, if there's more information, we might be more specific about this. Of course, employee ID is the primary key and I have shown it as such. Okay, now uh, what we are trying to do here is to mimic the situation that you will encounter when you try to design a system for a real life organization. Okay, so in that case what you're really going to do is to talk to various people within the organization and get the required information. Unfortunately here we cannot do exactly that and therefore the requirements are given in textual form and we are converting that into a structured entity relationship diagram. So clearly nobody is going to tell you, uh, you know, these are the attribute names. Well, they are just telling you what the business situation is. It's up to you to make up the attribute names. Okay, so that's why we have just made up the attribute names, emp ID, first name, last name. Now somebody else might have said employee ID or employee number and they could have said uh, instead of first name, last name, they could have said first underscore name, last underscore name, whatever. There are all those variations, but the idea is to capture the main intent of what is going on here. Okay, one other very important point that comes up here. 
Okay, uh, first of all, note that in MPyD, I have put an underscore and not a hyphen, not a space. That's really important. Now, the Oracle Data Manager, uh, Data Modeler, will actually allow you to, uh, you know, to leave a space in an in an attribute name or in an entity name, entity type name, or use a hyphen. It'll allow you to do that. But later on, when you try to generate the database schema from this, that is, in other words, you've completed your ER diagram, you're now ready to create the appropriate database. At that time, you'd run into difficulties. Okay, so I say, as a rule, don't use spaces, don't use hyphens in any of the names in your data in your ER diagram. By that I mean, not in the entity type name, not in the attributes. Okay, that's important. That's done. Now another very important point in this particular slide is, why don't we have an entity type called CRC, CharlesRiver.com? Is that an entity type? Okay, two points there. First of all, whenever you're drawing an entity relationship diagram, you're going to be drawing it in the context of a situation, in the context of an organization. Now, that organization or that situation is obviously connected to every entity type you're going to create. So, there's really, and therefore, it'll be connected to every entity type. And therefore, it's not really necessary or it's not even correct to include that itself as an entity type in the diagram. That's point number one. Point number two is, well, even if CRC were to be included, is it an entity type? Based on what you have discussed so far, it's not an entity type. It is an instance of some entity type, maybe called a company or organization or something like that, right? So including that as an entity type would be uh, really incorrect. That's why you see that I have not included it. Okay, one more very important point, and that is that when you're creating an entity relationship diagram for every entity type, you absolutely must specify the type of every attribute, not every entity type. For every attribute, you must specify the type of the attribute, okay? So to do that, of course, you know how to do that. We've seen it uh, in prior uh, examples. What you'll do is in the uh, in Oracle Data Modeler, you'll double click on the entity type. And then in the resulting window, you'll select attributes. And there you'll be able to specify the attributes. Okay. What I've shown here is that MPID is an integer. Of course, we've already specified that as the primary key. And I've said that first name is a varchar. 30, last name is a varchar 30. Important point, when you say integer, you can specify the size of the integer, but you don't have to. But when you specify varchar, you absolutely have to specify the size of the varchar. Now, once again, Oracle Data Modeler is not going to force you to actually specify the size. You can leave it blank, right? You just say it's a varchar, leave it blank, no problem, it won't bother you. But once again, when we try to go and generate the appropriate database, you will start getting errors. Okay, so, you, so two points. You absolutely must specify a type for every attribute. And for where care types, you must specify the size. Otherwise, you'll run into difficulties. Okay, let's move on then. So the requirement then says, each employee reports to one other employee or none, and each employee has many others or none reporting to her or him. Okay, look at this statement very carefully. What entity types are involved here? Here, this is making a statement about just a single entity type called employee, which we had called as V underscore M, right? There are, this is not a statement about two entity types. It's a statement about a single entity type and it's saying that some employees have other employees as their manager. In other words, some employees report to other employees. And then it says that a particular employee may report to somebody else or not, which is the chief executive doesn't report to anyone. Everybody else reports to somebody. And it also says that an employee may have others reporting to them or not. Somebody at the lowest level of the organization hierarchy has nobody reporting to them. However, 
So we are talking about employees reporting to other employees. Okay, which means that there is a relationship that we are talking about here. But the relationship is simply between employee and employee. Okay, we already know that this is called as a unary relationship and the diagram would look like this. Okay, it's a unary relationship. Now notice that the complete line, so in other words, it's a one-to-many relationship because one employee may have many subordinates. Okay, so it's a one-to-many relationship. But of course, the line is going to connect employee to itself because it's a unary relationship. Notice that we have made the entire line as dashed. Now, by default, in Oracle Data Modeler, when you draw the line, when you create a relationship, it will come out as uh, required on one side and optional on the other side. Okay, but here we made both uh, the both sides as optional. In other words, we made the entire line as dashed. Okay, that is because an employee might have some people reporting to to them or not, and every employee might report to somebody or not. Okay, so it's optional on both sides. Okay, now you know how to do this, how to specify this whole thing as dashed. Uh, in Oracle Data Modeler, you can click double click on the relationship itself, not on the entity type, but on the line. And then there you can say source optional, target optional. So you check both of them in this particular case and therefore the whole line becomes dashed. Okay. Uh, the next requirement says that CRC, which is the company, has many customers and sells many products. Okay. So it's simple. We've spoken already about the entity type called employee. Now we are talking about two additional entity types. So it's obvious we can just add those two new entity types. Okay, at this point, our problem description doesn't tell us anything about the attributes of these two new entity types. I call them v underscore cust and v underscore prod. And because we don't yet have any information about the entity attributes, we just make up something. Of course, each one has to have a primary key. So we say cust ID, prod ID. And of course, a customer must have a name, right? This may not be a human customer. It could be another organization. So I just say cust name is an entity, is an attribute. And similarly for product, well, every product must have a name. So we make up the product name, a prod name as the attribute, okay? As of now, we don't have additional information. So this is all we put in. Now, later on, as we go through the requirements, we may see that other attributes are mentioned, at which, we, at which point we'll just come in and add those attributes. Okay, so right now our ERD looks like this. We've got the employee entity type, which is with the unary relationship, and we know that there's a customer entity type and there's a product entity type. That's all we have. We have, we have not shown yet the relationships pertaining to all of that. Okay, now in a complete ER diagram, you will see that it's a completed, a connected diagram. No entity, entity type will just be hanging without any relationships. Everything will be connected. Okay, but in the initial stage, as we are drawing things, the, you will see some disconnected entity types. That's not a problem. Okay, so that's where we stand as of now. 